Hello. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Very good morning. We are ready for another round of curling here. Second round of the uh, Belgian League doubles playoffs. Yeah, that's a mouthful. Yeah, uh, something. Uh, it's something like that. We're gonna come up with some better names for it next season. I think we're gonna just call it BCL. You guys know we're here in Belgium. Yeah, I think we should call it BCL since Belgium, especially in the regulars, we have so many foreign teams uh, also coming in next next year. I think there's an English team, a couple of German teams signed up or uh, are willing to sign up. I think a Dutch team is coming over, maybe with two teams, French team. So is it really the Belgian Curling League or is it the kind of Western? Uh, maybe it's the European Curling League. Maybe we have to change that. You know, let's the get Korea on the League. <laughs> Not so we'll, much. We'll but, come up but, with something. We'll, we'll come, come up, up with something. something. <laughs> so today we have uh, two games, round two and round three of the doubles. Um, do you want to uh, tell the people about the doubles and the playoff system and the game of today? No. <laughs> that was it. Thank you for watching. Thanks for watching. Really appreciate <laughs> yeah, so this morning we have Michelle and Jose against Vedi. Uh, we've seen these guys, both of these teams, before here during the season. Michelle and Jose are actually Kevin and Brecht. They are cycling fans, so they decided to name their team after two famous uh, Belgian cycling uh, announcers. So, uh, very strong team. They play with uh, Desperate Housekeepers together in the four-man league. They uh, finished second in the second half of the season. So... Um, you know, and Michelle and Jose finished strong in the uh, Belgian league, in the in the doubles league. Mm -hmm. uh, really good competitors, really good players, very uh, focused, train a lot. So, uh, and they're going up against Vady, you know, one of the nas former national former. team for the doubles, uh, mixed doubles. So, you know, uh, Fairla and Dirk, they're very strong players. Dirk has been, Fairla has been on the uh, women's national team for a couple of years. Uh, Dirk was their former coach. Uh, he's always got his hands in everything. One of the best strategists we have here in, uh, in Belgium. So... It's looking to be a very good game. If they play the, to their level, this is going to be a very good competition today. Yep, they have a, or they had a rough start yesterday in round one where they lost against Bilenkin and uh, I talked to Dirk afterwards and he, he said, well, it was just not our game. We really did a poor performance. Um, even their LSDs were off. They, they struggled a bit. We didn't see the game, but based on, on his feedback, that wasn't their best game. And of course, Bilenki, we know Jeroen and Caro, they're a very strong team. They were kind of high up on my list of potential uh, winners but because of the formats. But they, they're, uh, up, the, the odds are against them, let's put it that way. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's a very strange format here for this year for the doubles. They're trying something new and... It's difficult to explain. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a way to be very diplomatic about the <laughs> format. But yeah, it's, it, things are never perfect at start, and they have to figure out a format. Uh, let's say summer, last summer, and you really can't anticipate how the season will go and what kind of events will occur and, and how it will be composed. So um, things are as they are, and the champion will be the champion after uh, the second round and the third round according to this format and yeah. i think next year there will be a different format that's uh semi-confirmed already by the bc uh the bca yeah so they they published it you know they published the the, the rules and how it was the format was going to be this at last july or august and they didn't want to change it in the middle you know you don't want to set a precedent of uh of changing things and saying okay so that way if enough people come and complain so i'm 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 actually you know while i find the format to be odd i agree with the bca's decision to stick with it and not try to change it in the middle of the season so mm -hmm. because that would be even more chaos uh, that would be adding more chaos to the chaos that's something you definitely don't want and that also sets a precedent like hey if if we don't feel right about some kind of system then the debates are open all season that's not what you want as a as a federation right so why don't we take a quick look at the standing see how things played out through yesterday so we had on cast yesterday we had idk against wiki to viking idk coming out victorious there so they jumped up to uh take the lead after vedi dropped a tough match against belenki so you know it's really kind of tight up there it's it's uh, you know, IDK is now in the in the driver's seat. You know, we picked them yesterday. Mm -hmm. We said these are these are our favorites, and they're in the driver's seat. You know, they're going to play against uh, Plastique van Loy this morning, and then they'll probably finish up against uh, Michelle and Jose this evening. So they're going to have 
you know, they're playing two of the weaker, you know, I'm putting weaker in quotes because these are by far not yeah, weak just teams. Weak based on the ranking, but not based on skill, of course. Uh. So I think they're they're looking really tough. You know, they're going to need, you know, if Vidi or Belenki have a have a shot at anything, they are going to need to play. You know, they're going to need help. They need to win out and then they need help. They need uh, IDK to lose one. So and actually, I, I'm wrong. IDK plays Vedi later tonight, so it's not against Michelle uh, and Jose. But so Vedi will have a chance to have that head to head, and you know, but they need to win this morning. Otherwise, it's uh, yeah, yeah. it's irrelevant. Belenki has their work cut out for them. They're playing Wiki the Viking, and then Michelle and Jose later today, and they will need to win both of those, and then hope for a loss, and then it's going to come down to the yeah. LSD. And that will be interesting. I mean, there is a scenario where we end up with uh, IDK, VD, and Belenki sitting top of the league with uh, three point each, so three way tie, and then LSD will be the tiebreaker and then i'm hoping that we can calculate the lsd somewhere <laughs> along the road so we're not in the dark and we don't have to end the stream well we have to, we have a tie but we don't know who, who yeah. the champion is i but that, that's something to uh to we will, later today we will make sure during the break between the first the second and third rounds we will make sure we have that covered so we have all of the scenarios in order so we know what will happen uh hopefully fingers crossed yeah but uh you know we're looking for some good curling today gonna be exciting you know last day of the season it's uh kind of late for everything you know like hey it's june it doesn't feel like curling weather but hey last weekend last day of uh of uh last day of our broadcast the for last the year day. this is the final day of broadcast june 4th and uh, then we'll be back i think somewhere in september we don't have a, a first date yet so I think if you want to enjoy curling on Curdia.tv, this is where you want to be today. Spend your Sunday with us. And like you said, it's summer out there. Um, I walked in the venue this morning and Stefan, our ice maker, was doing the ice and he was doing the ice in his uh, short trousers. That was a, a very nice view to yeah. see an ice maker in short trousers. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, asked, it, yeah, He said it was a bit cold on the, on the, the legs and the calves, but it looks so wow. funny. <laughs> yeah, I went out on the ice in my shorts and short sleeves. I was fine. You, I had to set up the cameras. It's okay. I think he's just being a little special. That's all. <laughs> so it looks like they are measuring. I don't know if that was the first or second one. Nope. They're shaking hands. They're getting ready to go. So we can talk about a little bit like the upcoming schedule. You can see it today. So we have uh, Wiki the Viking versus Belenki over on sheet A. Plastique van Loy versus IDK on sheet B. And here on the Curdia sheet, the broadcast sheet, we have Vedi against Michelle and Jose. As they are about to start, um, I didn't quite catch who was starting with the hammer. Um, I'm guessing Vedi has a hammer since the Vierle is setting up halfway uh, the track there. That feels right. Yep. So uh, there we go. We've got, yeah, Kevin setting the stone, the their stone out on the top position so yes and it looks like they're playing from position number two quite high not a lot of curl we've lost a lot of that beautiful curl we had during the uh corollas classic a couple of weeks ago but still enough to make the stones go around those guards and here we go with Brecht leading us off and end number one for Michelle and Jose. Now, as you guys know, in the doubles format, it's a race to the button, really. This feels a bit heavy. Also a bit outside. Yeah, the first couple of stones, is, uh, even though you had the warm-ups, it feels like it's still uh, getting acquainted with the ice conditions, figuring out where to put the broom, finding your muscle memory for that perfect draw weight does stay in the house so that could be could come into scoring but yeah they're gonna need to get get rid of that yellow one there on the back of the forefoot we have Vedi with the yellow stones to match their yellow sweaters today yep this one also feels a bit outside a bit heavier probably will fall on that red one Nope. Actually, they're starting to sweep it. So what do I know? First, <laughs> two stones in and I've already got the <laughs> hashtag John's wrong. This is a perfect stone. That's a great Curl stone there. Nicely behind the guard and then... Uh, 
right Just there on the button. Just in front of the tee. This is textbook play here from Vela. Very, very nice stone. So first hashtag John is wrong <laughs> of the day on the second stone. I don't think I got any of those yesterday. I don't recall saying that or having an, you say that at all yesterday. So I stopped caring about uh, <laughs> mentioning uh, wrongs. <laughs> That's true. We we need to make that chat's job. You guys have to call me out. Throw in those hashtags, comments, concerns, questions, jokes, all welcome. I uh, must say I like the retro outfits from uh, Michel and Jose there. Oh, I'm a I'm a big fan. Yeah, it's. Uh, if fit the cycling theme good morning tom hey, good morning tom yeah brecht was telling me this morning that it's a an old cycling jersey the one he's wearing it's a cycling jersey his father wore back in the 80s which makes me feel uh even less <laughs> young <laughs> but i i really like it. it's really cool it's from their his local the, his hometown of uh Comtique, so uh it's a very cool uh very cool idea and Kevin's got a similar one on. I don't think it's from the same cycling club, but they found one with similar colors, and I think it works well. I like that they're leaning into that uh, the cycling theme of the team. They said that for next year they're going to try to come up with a uh, a good logo. This one's going to be nice as well. It's going to take away those. Uh, those reds, being able to use those for something is backing. Yeah, they're just going to have to peel off this guard, maybe try to run it back. As we could run it back as well. Peeling it off would be good. Most likely going to go for the peel. Try to open it up and give, uh, of course, Vady to guard it again and maybe miss, and hopefully missing that guard. through his routine wiping off the bottom it's important we have generally kind of dirty ice here because of all of the initiations we do so it's very important to clean off the bottom of the stone get that junk out of the way this one feels wide with that speed yeah that's it's quite wide that's gonna miss i don't think it's gonna curl over enough to get on that back one. No, oh, it does <laughs> So yeah, as I mentioned, I really stopped uh, <laughs> throwing out the hashtag John's wrong. But it was uh, However, a nice stone. It, uh, it jammed on yeah. the red, so still sitting in scoring position. And uh, you know, opportunity here for Fairla and Dirk just to cover up that draw path. Dirk, a uh, left-hand player here. That's why he's uh, sliding from the other hack. Sometimes I wonder if that's an advantage if you have to come over on that side yeah there are times where that's an advantage you know if you have to come from that side you've got a little bit more of a, a wider angle i think it's more of a wow look at this such a good stone might even i think that is second third shot yeah i think that tucks in just inside of that red so Vady looking really strong here. But back to the the, the left-handed versus right-handed. So if you're a lefty, you're coming up from the, you come out, you slide out of the right hack. So it gives you a little bit more of an angle, like a flatter angle to come in. Whereas if you're right-handed, you have to kind of play a sharper, slightly sharper angle on the outside. So. But it's reversed when you come the other way. You know, if you're coming up the other side of the ice, it's the right-hander's advantage to, to the lefty. So it balances out. <laughs> this one looks like it's got a better line. I'm gonna hold this one just a little bit outside so to make sure they peel it off. Gonna catch a little bit on the nose. Oh, 
they get rid of that yellow stone there. Yeah, it and does. And the middle's open, so... Uh, yeah, very, very good stone there. Good, good, uh... How do I want to say this? Good, I'm losing my words. Um, good result. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> How old walk, were you? <laughs> took me way too long okay. to come up. All I could think of was good finish. It's like, no, it's not a finish. It's a result. That's it. That's the word I'm looking for. I just peeked over under the other sheets. I got a little surprise. I thought on sheet A they were playing quite fast, cause, but they left the scores up from last night. They haven't cleared the scoreboard yet. So I'm like, there's no way they're in the eighth end. <laughs> they just haven't cleared the scoreboard off yet from last night. So they're just going to want this one to curl over, kind of block up that middle. Feels a touch heavy. Will it over curl? Midas sweep. No, yeah, I fine. think that's okay. That's fine. Now, what can you do if you are a Brechten uh, Kevin? Do you try and promote that uh, red core guard to try and uh, tap it through? Yeah, I think the one on the left side there has probably got the most, uh, the, the easier line. I would kind of tap that one back, see if they can get it to run back at a slight angle to uh, get in there. But yeah, you have anything in the here. red, yeah. Even if it goes straight back, it will take away that top yellow. Yeah. It's their last stone of the game, so if they want to... Uh, of the of the end. Of the end, yeah. <laughs> they only get to play one end. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I always make that mistake. Now, that's a translation thing, I think, because yeah. I hear people always say, yeah, Dries, we're going to play Dries Belichers or three, yeah, yeah, three they mean games. three ends but it yeah. translates to three games so now I wonder if Brecht has got sponsorships <laughs> if that team is sponsoring him I Doubt at I'm, very. I, I doubt whether some of the companies on their shirts still exist. Yeah, that's that's also true. <laughs> yeah, their uh, shirts from the eighties. That's uh, over forty years back. Some why of the players you, on the why, sheets. Why do you have born back then? Why do you have to hurt me like that? <laughs> I'm going to be turning fifty in a couple of uh, uh, ten days. Oh. <laughs> and to say that the 80s were 40 years ago, that's that's painful. Oh, this yeah, looks yeah. wide. Is that gonna? Are they trying to play it around that stone, or just a little bit wide? Yeah, they want to make sure this one slides back. <laughs> Ryan was the, the call for the hard speed there. I don't think. I think he, he wanted to avoid hitting that red and knocking it out, so opening up the scoring area even more. So. Or he was just mad at him for throwing a bad stone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to let him sweep. So, uh, yeah. Three stones for... Uh, or is it three or two? It's two right now, but they've got an opportunity to score three here for yeah. Vady. They've got backing with that red one. All they needed to do is to be just barely biting. Not even just outside the red is enough, so... I think they're just going to try to curl it around that uh, red one sitting outside yeah, the house. Yeah, a little and bit of the backing, if they just uh, slightly tap the red one in the back, should be fine. Although they can't roll out too much. But they have an option to uh, score three here, and that would yeah. be a great start for VD in this game. Now, the risk is they're having to come around one of the Michel and Jose's stones that if... If this if this stone has the right weight, but it curls in and taps the red one, it could actually push that one into a scoring position. But looks like this one is way too wide, very hard. Yeah, you see Dirk saying he pushed, she pushed it wide. That was off broom. Uh, way off broom and way too hard. So better to miss it like that, not risk giving anything uh, to your opponent. But that's a two for Vady here in the first end. Good hammer efficiency there. You always like to put up multiple points when you have the hammer. 
they kind of controlled that end. Really didn't have a lot for uh, Michelle and Jose to uh, work with. And you see the importance of that first stone when you uh, when you don't have hammer. Yeah, you can really put the pressure on the other team by throwing a very good first stone, yeah. and then uh, basically just completely turning the hammer advantage to uh, to you. That's, yep. that's the thing you have in the doubles, and therefore I think that the hammer is less valuable in doubles than it is in the regular game. Yeah, it's but if you miss that first shot, if you're if you don't have the hammer and you miss that first stone, it gives it it's a p potential for the hammer yeah. team to be in such a strong position. So that's why that first one is so, so important. I mean, I thought Brecht had a decent line, just a little bit heavy, a little bit outside, but the heavy, the, the weight was the, was the bigger, the bigger issue there. All right. So very fair. is going to start us off here in the second as Vady leads two zero over Michelle and Jose. can see on the scoreboard on the sheet B that IDK took score two in the first, so they lead 2-0 over Plastique Van Looy. Oh, this one just catches that catches that guard. I think the weight was pretty good if it gets around there. Might have come up a little bit light, but obviously touching the guard takes a little bit of the uh, momentum out of it. Wrecked with his first stone. They're going to try to come around from the other side. Put something else just above the T-line. Probably right, right at the top of the forefoot would be ideal. Anything a little bit deeper than that yellow. But this one also appears to be wide and heavy. Apparently, it doesn't fall um, until it gets to that point where it slows down right at the end, and then it picks up the curls. Nope, I was uh, rubbing my microphone <laughs> against my uh, my chest there. So now this it wasn't deep, sitting right on right in front of the T line, but it's outside. This is a perfect perfect opportunity. Oh no, they can't yet. The the five rock rule, so they can't really play a hit and roll off of this. Ooh, where's the? They can't really play a hit and roll off it because that stone has to stay in play. But they're just going to try to curl in. A little tap won't hurt, though. That's going to be very... Oh, excellent stone. Very good tap. stone, yeah. Works. Excellent stone there. Yeah, didn't quite get the rollover. Oops, what do we have here? Oh, there we go. <laughs> didn't quite get the rollover that they would have liked to get it in front of that... Uh, right on the center line, but... It is open now, so five stones are in play, so that means they can play a proper hit and roll here, and I think that's what they're going to do. Good morning, Tur. Ah, uh, the goat, yeah, Tur. You're not allowed to use the goat emoji, Tur. Uh, apparently, you uh, did not manage to win your game yesterday, and uh, you finished second to last in the, in the <laughs> doubles league, so... <laughs> He had an excuse yesterday all lined up too. He threw Lars under the bus and said, Lars hasn't played for two months. Uh, oh, that sounds like a you problem, not an us <laughs> problem. <laughs> yeah, if you're a goat, you're you're able to carry. Yeah, the, go the goats can carry. They find a way to raise their teammates' game. So, I mean, and besides, calling yourself the goat, I mean, come on, even Jordan doesn't call himself the goat. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this one's going to be nice. It's going to get around that guard. Whoa, curls nice. a little bit. We want to make sure they hold it a little and bit. And he finds that little tap and roll to get yellow out. Oh, oh fantastic beautiful stone, stone beautiful there. Beautiful stone. Perfect. See, dude, this is uh, a typical goat stone. Oh, my God, Tura. The bad <laughs> puns and everything. <laughs> Yeah, that one it has been clicked. That is that is definitely a great shot there. Absolutely perfect. It's tucked over. It's in front of the T line. I got rid of it. Got rid of the yellow. Now this red one is that's sitting out there is a bit of a problem because you can they can play that with enough weight. They can get rid of those two reds, so they can get rid of two of them and be sitting the 
the shooter will stay, so this one's going to have a bit of weight behind it. Derek not even bothering to chase it because that sweep, <laughs> it's, with that weight, it's going to be difficult. Oh, this could work. And that's one. Uh, didn't have to wait to move the second one, but it is now. I no, think third, third shot. Yeah. So opportunity for. And that was a risk. It looked like it had good weight, but I think it just a little bit too much on the nose of that outside stone. So it didn't curl over enough. Now this is going to be an opportunity for another uh, tap and roll for Michelle and Jose. Now this is the kind of match I can get behind where both teams are, are putting up big scores and having to throw big stones. A little excitement this morning. Yep. Hi, Bina. Good evening to you. Bina. Good morning to us. <laughs> Hello. I figured this would be right in your, uh, right in your uh, time slot. <laughs> All right, how's this one looking? Looks to be a bit, a little bit on the outside. They want this one to curl over. Ooh, they don't want this to hit on the outside of that yellow. It's, it's good. No, it did. They should have swept oh, no. that. I think they should have swept that. Mm -hmm. 3.42 AM. So are you just getting home from the, uh, from the bar playing your music? Yeah, that one I think that was a that was a sweep call there. That was they needed to sweep that. I mean, obviously the the stone was stone wide, but they should have swept it to try to hold it out a little bit wider if they could even try to miss it. I think once they realized it was going to be on the outside, should have swept that. So unfortunately, now it moves things. They were looking strong, and now it it gives Vady the this shot position. Yep, they're going to look to try to play off that red one and in. Is it going to have enough? It doesn't really fall that much over on that side, so it seems. Oh, it just curls. Oh, okay, they weren't going to play off it. They're just going to curl it in. Oh, okay, that was intended to be a draw all the way. So a little bit light. Now this gives an opportunity. <laughs> they're, they're giving each other opportunities back yeah. and forth. Oh, oh, see, I would have figured you would have picked up more after Memorial Day as the summer goes in that you would have uh, would have picked up a little bit more. But I guess maybe once you get to July, once the 4th of July stuff starts happening and the real summer fests start to begin. We are just getting into the end of school year stuff. So like all the final exams are coming up starting uh, next week. My kids are in the middle of study mode. So kids, if you're watching at home, turn it off and get back to studying, please. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it could be nice background, uh, some kind of nice background. When I used to study, I couldn't really study when it was too quiet. Then uh, I would be distracted by the silence. I needed something in the background that was not that disturbing but also would break the silence. Ooh, unfortunately, it doesn't get the triple. It just curled in a little bit too much, but still set up that they could go after that uh, yeah. that red. A nice little double there, clearing out some of those yellows. That one yellow is still exposed. You can uh, yeah. use yeah, this the redstones to, to take it out and then score a big house there. So I think play here for uh, Fidi is to either draw in or put the guards and avoid reds to kind of tap the redstone back and get the yellow out so i think that's the play they're gonna do they're going to uh try and guard off the option for uh, michelle and jose to tap their red one back and get rid of yellow yeah you're gonna try to guard this over i think just to prevent the run backs mm -hmm. oh minnesota's prefer outdoor activities yeah that makes sense i mean when it's cold and gray six months out of the year that Going inside to watch a band is pretty good, but once you have the opportunity to get outside, you go outside. That makes sense. <laughs> it 
So, important guard here. If this works, they can uh, opt for a steal. But if the guard is not doing his job and isn't guarding, then uh, Michel and Jose have an opportunity to score uh, four points. There it goes. It's a late curl, but it gets over there. I think it does a trick. That's a very, very nice guard there. Very well played. People go up north. I mean, Minnesota is already up north, right? <laughs> but I get what you mean. Yeah, like the Minneapolis-St. Paul area is down towards the southern part of the state. So they go up north where all the lakes are. Fishing, camping, hunting, all of that stuff. Or do they actually go to Canada? You know, like in the in the winters, the Canadians come down to the states, go to Arizona. In the in the summers, the Americans go up to Canada. I'm trying to find like what are the options uh, Michel and Jose are looking at to uh, to score some points here. Basically, they have to find a way to get yellow out. What's their best shot here? Is it just uh, to do the double run back, yellow or red, and then uh, they have. They, they do have a hit and roll yeah. off this wide red, and it looks like that's what they're going to try to do. Yeah, I think they want to avoid tapping in an already yellow one, and that little hit and roll could work. Up north means anywhere outside the cities, even if it's down south, that could be up north. Okay. <laughs> All right, yeah, looking at the angles, that's their option. Not an easy stone. No. But no. if it works, I think that's a potential shot of the match right there. I mean, it could give them four points. It's worth a try. Uh, this is on that. Well, maybe if it looks white, it's yeah. too white from the start. Yeah. It will uh, uh, work. All right. Steal uh, of one steal for Vady. Vady. I think uh, Dirk is double checking, but confirmed. That's one yellow and a steal. And I think uh, Michel and Jose, well, they didn't play uh, bad, basically. Just uh, they were facing a good Vedi here. Yeah, yeah. A couple of, couple of wide stones so far on their takeouts. They've been they've missing on the lines. Like, that one was going to be a tough one. I Always going to be a tough one. I think I might have opted to tap the yellow back to the red to try to get it further back but you really don't like tapping your opponent using your opponents to go back but i don't think there was any possibility of them running the yellow into a scoring position yeah. to be honest so yeah that guard was so important there i mean the guard basically took their uh their straightforward option away yep they had a second option but that was a more difficult one Okay, so I see over on sheet one, uh, Belenki scored three in the first end, so they wow. lead three to zero over Wiki the Viking in end number two. This yeah. Fairless starts us off here in end number three. Vady leads three zero over Michelle and Jose. Yeah, unfortunately for Belenki, winning the games with big numbers doesn't really add up to your uh, to your odds in terms of tiebreakers they had a big win 12 to 2 against vady earlier in the in the playoffs yesterday but only lsd counts and the win loss uh oh very nice stone there look at that perfect freeze up against it very very nice yep paolo tour played yesterday and they lost so we're not sure we can call him the goat anymore no the goat <laughs> is no longer the goat but he's on chat, so... He, uh, is, he is here chatting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the GOAT is now uh, second to last in the doubles. He wasn't able to carry uh, his teammates. Yeah, he's a bit hurt. So, uh, <laughs> I can understand. It's never... Uh, this one looks pretty good as well. It just has got to curl over. There it goes. Oh, a nice freeze would be perfect. And even... I, this is also good. You can always tap it. Yeah, that's a very, very strong position there for them. Yep, I, I like this. You're going to see Vady. It's going to force Vady to make a decision. <laughs> Burning his Vermeera t-shirt right now. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Tur, the, the, the fans are harsh. Turn on you quick. One day you're the goat. Next day yeah. you're the... I don't know. What's the, what's the opposite of the goat? I don't know. The... We're gonna have to find that out. We have to find it out. But it proves that 
Arthur's big investment on hiring those bot farms is starting to pay off with uh, <laughs> the, the first confirmed uh, purchase of a t-shirt right there. <laughs> oh, this is another great stone. Look at that, like right in there. Now, wait, are there five? Yeah, there's there's now five stones in place. So let's see what Michelle and Jose are looking at that we can try to take these out. They can... They're going to try to tap that red one back, use those things there. Uh, I guess not, Bina, no loyalty there. F fans are fickle. I mean, but this is like European football. These fans will, will they love their team and they hate their team, but they'll still support their team. So <laughs> you ask these, you know, when a team finishes like near the bottom of the, of the uh, rankings, the, the fans are mad, but then the next season starts They're and back. it's our year. This is going to be our year. I can feel it. <laughs> it's part of the sporting drama. That's the cool thing about sports. It's season based. So every year you have a, uh, a new chance unless you're relegated of course and you have to wait a little longer for that uh, big glorious moment all right gonna try to tap this red one back this is a bit heavy it could be interesting though could be interesting oh not bad does get rid of that red and interesting for a video here because now they have a clean shot at getting out uh, their redstone and uh, yeah. leaving three yellows in the house so it gives the uh, vd a big opportunity here to put some pressure yeah i think they can get rid of this red one easily with no backing yeah yeah the red one uh, i mean that's what Dirk is looking at. It's like, okay, we're not going to get on the nose. Probably not going to get on the nose. So shooter will slide to the outside. Yeah, that's that the yellow one thing. will go. No, so still okay. Yeah, that's why I was commenting on that stone being a little too hard because it it ended up moving things around a little too much. And stayed away on the outside. They'd like would have liked that one to be a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> the, Hi Wayne, the <laughs> Teox would be the opposite of goat. Well, yeah, that's <laughs> that's a fair remark. There we go. Yeah. Don't make it, don't overcomplicate things when the answer is uh, so simple. <laughs> Very good one. It, the, it doesn't oh, have it's the weight though. Curl. No, it doesn't quite have the weights. Not a bad positioning, but it does kind of make it diff more difficult to get that red one out of the way. And actually, you, I even have an expression you could say T-A-O-G is the antonym of goat. <laughs> so it fits. I just still have to figure out how to pronounce it. Aug. Taug, yeah. Yeah, T A O is Tau, so Taug. <laughs> All right, we're going to have to trademark that and make t shirts. <laughs> yeah. With Wayne getting a credit, of course. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that one didn't quite work out the way they wanted. It's just a little bit light. They didn't need yeah. to move it very far, but yeah. uh, needed a little bit more weight on it. Now, now I wonder what... Uh... I think they're going to draw another one in. They still have a shot stone, but there's a little bit of room to just uh, creep one in. Can they draw this one back onto that, that yellow sitting I second so. shot? I guess so. That's a bit outside. Looks a bit heavy. Can't Ooh, it starts to curl, but it was slightly too heavy, and therefore it curled too late. Unfortunately, yeah. now that leaves a pocket for for Vady, but I don't know if they're going to use that over there. So if if Vady doesn't do anything with that pocket, that could be something interesting for. Yeah, I think they're still looking to get rid of that redstone. The redstone is shot. Um, Michelle and Jose they opted not to guard it, and therefore they gave Dirk another shot at taking it out. Yeah, it's and true, and they don't have to hit nose on this one, yeah. just on the side because they're pressed, they're they're frozen together, so that would move the red one enough. So, so not going for a guard there was that um, something they would 
reconsider in hindsight uh, like wouldn't that have been a better option and Dirk didn't manage to do a good take out his previous stone but now uh, he gets to do a, a do over or retry I'm not sure they would reach they would I don't know necessarily regret it I think it's just yeah they missed the it was just a little bit mm. wide on that last stone because this is not an easy one so he uh -huh. has to come up and this one's going to curl over onto it so not necessarily now now this is a decision that they have to make because do they do they put something up to try to prevent them from from doing anything with this or are michelle and jose going to try to like try to draw in get a second stone yeah, there they can still draw in. i mean a good draw could give him two points and that could be interesting there it's uh they do have the hammer though yeah yeah so it might be better off trying to cover up this to keep to protect that shot stone because if that shot stone goes having a draw with your last or yeah i think they need to protect that shot stone so cover up those yellows yeah i think protecting the shot stone could be important because that's their uh that's the one stone that is giving them a potential win in the sense if that red stone that shot stone if they would lose it then certainly yellow has a uh, three shot stones that's that could be a tricky risky thing uh, i think yeah. that's something you want to avoid you really want to avoid losing that one red stone there yeah. so maybe prior to just making sure it stays in the game uh, or in the end as long as possible but i'm also not really sure what they're setting up for i here. think they're going for a for a draw there their previous stone could help them roll it in but they're going for uh looking at the weight this is I would guess too hard there. this is too hard unless they're going for a little tap and roll but it has quite a bit of weight well if this curls enough it's not going to though oh there it goes there it goes it'll start to curl in the end so a little tap and roll could work could work it is sitting not second but third and now Duke is looking can we it's get hard to rid? say if it's yeah. it's hard to say if it's second or third I'm guessing that one yellow stone is still uh yeah it's, I think the, this angle it's really hard to yeah, say yeah. like it looks like the yellow could be hanging over more but from this angle it's this other angle it's harder it's really dirt get out of the way please <laughs> yeah. our viewers want to get in into the suspense it's hard to say but obviously for uh, Vedi the guard is gone so they don't have to creep around the guard to get rid of that shot stone they have a, a wide open field to get rid of the shot stone there yeah they're just gonna try to catch the left edge of that uh frozen yellow It'll move the red out of the way. Shh. Might even be able to get over yeah. far enough to kick that yellow, the other red, out of the yeah, out of the button. Could so. be an interesting one. I'm really looking forward to see how this plays out. Most I'm, of I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> now Michel and Jose, they opted not to defend the shot stone twice in a row, and are they going to get punished for that with this stone? Immediate call for a sweep there. This could could overcurl. I think it's gonna catch that top yellow. So we're not sure what that's gonna do. Ooh, it's gonna catch the top yellow. It gets rid of uh, a redstone, but Michel and Jose they uh oh. oosh, it's, it's so hard to tell again. It's so hard to tell again. I think also players are looking at which stone is now sh shot. And they oh there's such a it, and it's not easy to get rid of that yellow because of that red yeah. sitting on the back there and a nose hit's not going to be enough to to get a second point unless they find right in that pocket but then it's going to be yeah they it's oh i don't know this is a, a difficult decision to make here uh what are you I honestly don't know what the options are here. They're like, coming from this other side. Like first question, who's shot at this point? Is it yellow or is it red? Red is shot. I can I can see it from the back line, the back camera that the red is closer to the button or to uh, the pin. Oh uh, yeah. 
So that, so they're sitting one, but it's it's precarious. They can't move it at all, or Vady becomes so. This they're gonna throw it away. Yeah. They don't they don't want to take a but, risk of. Uh, yeah, good yeah. good call there. I think that's a good yeah. strategy. Take the one. Don't Take risk one. don't risk giving up three. Matt, good morning. Good morning, Matt. Yeah, that was an interesting end. You you don't like to be on the receiving end of those, like having to make that decision, yeah. especially to throw one away. You can see Dirk smile. Dirk was kind of hoping I, that they would try to do something and end up uh, be throwing an unfortunate miss and giving Vedi some kind of. Uh, gift or free points that yeah. you're always hoping as an opponent team there is something in it for us if they miss yeah but uh so michelle and Z jose get on the board as they they didn't in, take in the, the third bait. so getting on the board was uh but vady still leads three to one as we head into the fourth some updates from the other sheets uh let's see on sheet a wiki the viking scored one in the second so on that one, they are in the third end with Bilenki leading 3-1 to one over Wiki de Viking. On sheet B, uh, Plastique van Looy scored three in the second to uh, leapfrog over IDK. So that matches in the third with Plastique van Looy leading 3-2 to two over IDK. That's interesting. That is interesting. So IDK is virtually not winning. Bilenki is winning. Vidi is winning. So we are set up currently for a, a three-way tie going into the final round of the playoffs so uh it's it's too soon to kind of make a <laughs> yeah make a call here way too much curling but, left this morning but, but yeah i, I want to explain to the viewers what's at stake here and uh kind of build up the suspense we all hope to have a a good final round with uh with three teams still in the running to become a champion uh, ooh, and this one feels it feels like the sliding was out compared to where the stone was heading. Yeah, Breck stone came up a little bit light, he, but he's adjusting to the ice. He he was a little bit long on his first couple stones this, this morning. Very so, good. But this one's gonna come in very good. It's yeah, gonna yeah. be. They can sweep it to get it into the red, maybe. But that's an excellent stone there. Very nice stone from Verla. I think they're looking at a draw there. I think if I'm in this situation, I'm probably trying to tap that red one back. Take advantage of it now that's... Well, this is the last stone before the takeouts come into play, but mm -hmm. I think while it's open, it would leave a guard if, you know, if they tap it back, their shooter stays as a guard. They've got backing there, but they're going to try this tricky one of trying to draw around that yellow. If the weight's right, it should be good, but uh, you've got to get the weight in the line just right. Oh, another update from uh, sheet B. They just finished end number three. IDK scored two, so they take the lead again. So they lead four to three as they head into the fourth end over Plastique van Looy. Good matchup going over there. This one's... The weight looks good, but I think it's just going to curl over onto the yellow. A little bit light as well, so... But it's set in a position. They can use it. They, they high-fived, but... I think that was uh, the the volleyball in them where they high five after every play. They were discussing <laughs> about okay, what did what went wrong there? What did we need to do? This one's gonna be a guard. They're gonna try to put something up over that red so it can't be used. Take the yellow out. This one's gonna look pretty good. Oh, mullet over curl. No, that's going to stay just fine. Yep. So now, Michelle and Jose, for me, they need to go and promote that red one off the, on the right side. That's their best bet to get into scoring position. Yeah, they, they need to open up the, the draw pots again. They... Uh... 
But they don't have a hammer. That's the disadvantage of playing doubles. You, they only have three more stones to play. So if they want to clean up, they don't have that much time with uh, the amount of stones. Yeah, so good setup here for Vedi. Um. I see, looking at it like this, I like that promotion from the right side because you're not playing it hard. The shooter will roll out a little bit on the side, but it'll still stay pretty well covered, covering the draw path. I see. Practice looking at it, but I think if you wait too long, then Vedi's going to cover that up as well. I think this is the time to do it. Because getting rid of that top, that top yellow, the yellow and the eight foot, doesn't change anything. Mm -hmm. It it's still, it's still covered up. It's the the draw path is still covered up. So you've got those guard, the yellow guard in front of it that makes that virtually impossible to do anything with. I think you just got to come up the other side, boys. You're looking at the wrong side. <laughs> they still like this draw. I mean, draw weight is still there. They just have to get the line right, line and weight. I know that Kevin and Brecht watch these matches back. That's why I can tell them. <laughs> I'm telling them future, future Kevin, future Brecht, when you watch this, you need to come up the other side. Kevin indicating it's a bit heavy. Yeah, let's got to curl over, trying to make that curl. Yep, heavy. Sits on the back of the house, but. Let's see. Now they're going to look at this side as well. They're going to cover up that draw path. Yep. I think. Hmm. For me, I think I would draw. I I would cover up the other side. I would take away that that run back. Maybe even possibly taking it out, but I think just guarding over it would be better. This is such a difficult, like it's such a tight window to be able to draw it. That's, <laughs> hey, a new hashtag. John's right. <laughs> <laughs> this one looks pretty good. It might be a touch. No, that's actually really good. That's going to settle in right next to that red. Yep. Covers up that draw, so takes away that any chance. I just don't think there was any any chance for that to get to curl enough to get to around. curl enough to get around. Nope. It just has to be a little bit deeper into the red than that yellow one. So maybe this was then that was still possibly there. So now for Michelle and Jose, this is their option. They have to run that back. They have to tap it back. It's it's they won't lose the shooter. So they'd even have another opportunity to tap something into play if they needed to. Now, obviously, it's a lot easier to say this than do this. <laughs> but I think this is the this is the right call. Yeah. I sometimes wonder, does it help seeing things from a higher angle where we have our cameras? Because if you're standing on the ice, you, uh, you don't really get a, a huge overview angle you, you get to compose that angle in your head yeah but uh looking from things from uh from a distance really oh changes. for sure yeah this this is much you know it's much easier for us so maybe that's why dirk is such a good uh tactician is he's tall he has that <laughs> overhead view so yeah. same with me i'm tall i have that overhead <laughs> natural overhead view <laughs> Felt a bit insecure about uh, the line there. This might overcurl. Yeah. Is it gonna hit the guards? 
is, yeah. And they don't want to put up uh, another guard. Basically, no hit would be best thing. But if this falls over, mm, they might still okay. Yeah, it's still okay. But the risk was they would close uh, close the window for themselves there with, uh, yeah. with that miss. But now that's what uh, Vady's gonna do. They're gonna guard cover that up. Yeah. Yeah. For Vady, it's the kind of typical counterplay. They know what uh, what Michel and Chazé are trying to do, so they counterplay it with the guard. That's what they did with the previous zone. Now they know what uh, the the next best thing is. Michel and Chazé have in their uh, in their minds, so yep. they counterplay again. Yep. Bit of a bit of trepidation from Kevin on that throw. You can see he wasn't. He was worried about it being too hard. Ended up being too light, and ended up curling over this one is going to be a bit on the heavier side, but that's okay. It's still going to get in the way and close things off. It's not going to tap it forward enough to really take anything away. No, the way um, red and yellow are lined up now, uh, they can't really do the double run back because that's probably not going to work, I, although it could work. It's hard to tell. Well, they're, I think they're going to have to if Rekt gets out of the way. I believe that yeah, they're going to try to play off the yellow to tap the red back. That's all they can do. Yep. That's the only chance. And actually, I like the angle these are lined up at. Nose hit on the yellow might push that right into the right spot. It could work indeed. It yeah. could work. Nose hit maybe a little bit outside of the nose. And that will be a pretty good line. Yeah, maybe I nose hit might push it a yeah, little bit I, too I, much. I, I would the, go slightly off nose there. Yeah. Uh, but that's such a hard one. Um, the devil is in the details. So it's not just throwing a good stone. It's also making the perfect line calls here. Yeah. And the weight. Ooh, straight away on it. Yeah, this is all also over. Yeah. So a miss here. Then the question is, will it create a, a new situation? No, it's just a, a plain miss. So that leaves Vedi with two stones in the house and a draw for three yeah, here a draw from either side out into anything into the white is enough so they're gonna come from the uh open side of the ice oh i uh, remember uh, was it in the i think it was in the golden carolus uh, where tour had a draw for four he just had to put a stone in into an open house but he left it short and yeah. therefore they only scored three so just saying it's not because it looks easy. They're going to make the shots. Yeah. The former goat even. Uh, <laughs> the tau. <laughs> yeah. So but they have plenty of room, so that should be a uh, opportunity here for Vady to double up their uh, point total. Yeah. And really take command in this, uh, in this match. I don't want to say easy peasy lemon squeezy, but I just did. <laughs> <laughs> so this one is just about the weight. Looks looks, looks heavy. Yeah, especially coming from that outside. They have we haven't had a lot of stones out there. Is so there some backing on that side? Well, the mm, weight's fine. No, it's okay. It's gonna be okay. And All right there. Did I say on heavy? The it's perfect. It's right the there on the T. Three for Vady. Yes, yeah, so Vady doubles up. Punch their lead to s their lead to six to one over Michelle and Jose. That's a halfway year. halfway through this match. I think this is going to be a big. This is a this is an important end for Michelle and Jose. If they want to stay in this match, they need to score two. The game deciding end. And I think so. Yeah, for the tournament, Vedi is still in the running. They need the win to have a shot at becoming the champion in the last round. So Vedi really needs this win. And then we have to look at um, the other sheets to kind of see that they, they have to hope that IDK could lose a game. And they have the head to head against IDK in the last round. So yep, yep. That, that's interesting there. VD IDK could be the championship deciding game later today. Yep. So we had an update. Normally we would stream Plastic van Looy against um, Belenki in the last game. But Plastic yep. van Looy, they have to forfeit one of the players. Um, I think has a, has a slight injury or can play a final game. Oops. So yes. we might end up streaming Vedi IDK uh, later today, which yeah. could be interesting to so watch. Fearless starting us off here in the fifth end as Vedi leads 6-1 to one over Michelle and Jose. 
Sweeping to get this one around that guard. It gets Oof. around <laughs> it, but not quite deep enough. And ooh, even just comes up short of the house. All right, opportunity here. The Michelle and Jose need to take advantage. They need to get this one into spot. Yep. A uh, quick update over on sheet A as we we're speaking of Belenki. They took scored three in the third, so they lead it six to one in the fourth over Wiki the Viking. All right, so Belenki is probably going to win their game, moving up in the ranks, tying with, uh, uh, let me guess, potential IDK. I don't know what what's the score on the IDK uh, Plastic Van Looy game so far. Um, IDK is leading four to three in the fourth but they're down to the hammerstone in that end and it looks like all right yeah so both so. belinky and and vidi are kind of hoping for idk to uh, drop the ball in uh, this game or the next yeah i think it was a big mistake there from uh yeah. breck to leave that stone way short they really needed that one in the house yeah, they really this didn't one's looking pretty good. This is a very good stone. It's slightly short, but then again, at this stage, Vidi is in a situation where they don't have to win ends anymore. They just have to avoid uh, Michel and Jose from making a comeback in the game. Yep. And that's why that was so uh, so tough seeing Brecht miss the stone. If Villa was unable to do a good draw, then you should kind of seize that opportunity to make a good draw and have two good stones in the house, building up the pressure, and they uh, fortunately failed to do so. Better too soft than too hard. I And honestly, I would come up the other side. Yeah, yeah that's a good quote. That goes for boiling eggs, but also uh, <laughs> for playing this stone right here. Uh, actually, there are eight ends, Bina. Full eight end matches. But we had, I think, two of the three matches we we showed yesterday, last night, or two of the three matches we had on the ice last night ended after six. So yeah. they must play six ends. Um, but, but it's a maximum of eight. Yeah, and the ends go faster. You you only throw five stones each so that's 10 stones instead of uh, 16 stones which Absolutely. explains why the, uh, the game paces much more faster yep having light on his stone like two lights so this one's going to be a very nice stone from uh from dirk yeah, tap excellent. it back excellent one and that's i think something that maybe kevin should have tried on his stone was was going in and tapping that yellow one out of the way rolling underneath and now now they're stuck they're gonna probably have to move their own red one back yeah i think that's kind of the story of the game so far like halfway um michel and jose get in a situation where they kind of get stuck and they have to find options that yeah. was the, the situation last game they got stuck the and last end. The last end, yeah. They they <laughs> got stuck and then uh basically VD just closed the uh, closed the curtains there. Yeah. Just putting guards. And, and when you get stuck your your margin of error gets smaller and smaller. Like this, it's like yeah, they can they they can't really afford to miss this shot. And that's uh, unfortunately what we've seen so far in this uh match from Michelle and Jose. They've been struggling to when they need a shot to hit the shot so this one here now they're unfortunately stuck they're having to play a takeout a difficult one it's probably going to try to it's probably going to end up moving their red one out of the way as well it's uh they're looking for this yellow one that they're hitting to come over the top and hit the left side of the yellow so that both the yellows go away but the red's not touched but this is not an easy one Kevin's going to need to put some good weight on this. Which makes the line much more difficult to control. This one I feel is like a little bit inside. It's curling more than they want. Good work. Good work. 
Oh, they mm -hmm. lose the red one and they don't lose uh, both yellow stones. Oh, yellow's still sitting too. I think you're going to just see a draw into the... Take away a bit of that path. Update from Sheet B, ID, IDK stole one in the fourth, so they lead it 5-3 to three over Plastique van Looy as they move into the fifth end. IDK um, favorite to win this uh, doubles playoffs here, especially with, uh, with the current virtual win. You know, if Vady will still have an opportunity to at least level things up. If they win, if Vady wins this match, holds on to win this match, they still have an opportunity. And they beat they beat IDK. Then it comes down to what does it come down to? Wait, would they be level? Um, if yes. Vady, yeah, they would be level. Yes, because they'd be level at eight points, LSD. and it comes to LSD. Yeah. yeah. And I really and Belenki is also going to be trying to get involved there. They're going to just have to win all of their matches, try to get to the eight points themselves, and then see <laughs> see what happens, how it plays out. Yeah. Yeah, I think for Belenki, Belenki's only shot at winning this playoffs is winning all three games, entering that three-way tie, or hoping for a three-way tie, and then um, the LSD is the, the one tiebreaker <laughs> that they're counting on. I don't know how they. Through oh, their LSD this morning. No idea. I think that's also what Karin Jeroen said, basically, or uh, or major plan is to um, first throw excellent LSDs and then win our games and then see how. Yeah, how that's good all they can do. It's yeah. like they, they, it's they have no control over it. I mean, they can, they can, they have to. They need the win. They need the good LSDs, and then it's just let's see what happens. And uh, yeah, but yeah. We were mentioning that this morning, and Kara was like, "Stop putting pressure on the LSDs." I know it's important. Stop pressuring me. If you mention LSDs one more time, I'm gonna dent your heads. <laughs> but that's uh, that's the reason why uh, your room is always wearing either a cap or a hat. That's the kind Probably of heights that the dents. <laughs> So I'm going to try to tap this red one. Play it in. Yeah, play it a little bit heavier. Give it a chance. It needs to be on the outside of this red. That's Good work. Good work. Oof. Oh, he should have swept it. He called him off. He should have kept sweeping it to hold that angle. Good effort. Unfortunately, just curled a little bit too much and ran it a little straighter in between those yellows. Yeah. They're seeing that there is a, there is a draw to up that outside part of the ice. They're just going to cover up this. Which side are they going to cover up? Outside or inside? There's there's lines from both, but I think on the outside... I think the, um, the wall side has more guards kind of... Uh, reducing yeah, it's a the, bit the harder. Path. Yeah, it's yeah. a bit harder to get into this. If I, if I had to make my final draw and I had to choose uh, I'm a, am I going to go for the, the left open sides or uh, the right wall sides I would opt to go over the left side feels like the draw angle yeah. the draw puddle is a little bit more feasible so uh, that means if you counterplay that logic that makes sense why uh, VD is guarding up that side
And uh, a guard is fine. Basic goal here is uh, block the draw and force Michel Langer to try and do a good draw over on the other side. And even if they make the perfect draw, they can only score one. And that's the result. That's uh, great for uh, Vidi. Basically, they can't really do that much wrong here. The only thing they can... Uh, that they don't really... Well, too, too deep and sitting at outside, giving them a uh, giving Michelle and Jose an opportunity to uh, hit and roll. But this one's going to be deep. So yeah. this is or is it? Derek wanted yeah. to make sure it does get a little deep. It has so that, to sweep. But this is interesting because the way they're lined up now, the, is it double an option? I think it is. If you hit the yellow on the inside, that's I think you double them out. So much weight. I don't yeah. know. I it's don't know. Pretty because that. Well, it doesn't have to be s a lot of weight. The yellow, the yellows don't have to go completely out of the house. They just have to. Uh, but that outside yellow is behind the oh, shot yeah. stone, so yeah, yeah. it's gonna be very hard to. Oh, yeah, yeah. They get can't that score over. too because there's that third yellow that's uh, yeah. taking. Yeah. So for me, whoa. well, that that means they don't have to throw it hard to bring a, a second stone into scoring position. They just have to uh, throw it hard enough to get red out out of the red zone. I actually like coming up the side where Brecht's looking because if it's they have an option that if it's too hard or it's too far outside, they could still chip in off that red one. There's a red one right behind Brecht that they could chip in off of and maybe get the angle to, to play over. It's... And that's just if it's too hard, or maybe even that's the play that they're looking at altogether. But I, they don't have to draw all the way onto the button. They just need to get it fully. Oh no, they do. They do. Yeah, that yeah, yellow they have one to make is a that's right. Draw. The yellow one got. I, I thought mean, that was the, the setting on the back of the red. It's yeah. a difficult draw to make. Whereas with that little uh, kind of double, if you just hit the the yellow one on the inside, it it could move the the shot stone out of shot position and leave your shooter in shot position but I guess uh, they, sometimes that there's a there's a hard choice there's no kind of straightforward obvious right answer it's just what you feel comfortable with how you kind of estimate your odds yeah what kind of shot do you feel comfortable making it's not gonna get over is it? It's yeah, not they have to look for the chip there because it's hitting the, the no, red one. Too far on the nose. Yeah. Just a little too far outside. And now that leaves. I mean, the advantage with uh, with going for the double is at least if it fails, you take away one of the yellow stones. But now, Fidi is scoring three points because uh, because of that miss. So well, that apparent. Well, I'm, I'm counting three yellows in the white, so... That's yeah, 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 but they looked like they were going to throw another stone, so I right. was just checking to make sure we weren't off. No, I uh, think Dirk was just looking for... Probably telling them, hey, you should have done this, or you yeah, should have yeah. done that. I mean, that's <laughs> also the reason why you go for the double take out. If, if it misses, at least you kind of reduce the, the damage as well, yeah. so there's that that advantage of, uh, of that option. Yeah. Uh, but now this is worst-case scenario. They they not yep. only missed the stone, but they were unable to, uh, to do some damage control. Yep. So another three more for Vady as they take a commanding nine to one lead into the sixth end. Yeah. Something tells me we're probably not going to see uh, an eighth ender here. No. <laughs> is it so hard to score big houses sometimes in the doubles? Although that's not entirely true. Looking at the scoreboard, I see uh, three three houses there on the on the other two sheets. So uh, yeah. there, but still, you can only score six max and that's v a very rare occasion where you score six given the fact that you yeah. had those uh those those cards no power play so far kind of wish we'd have seen one that last end but heading into the sixth fairless leading us off vady leads nine to one over michelle and jose yeah, big win yeah bina that that was a bit a, a bit confusing for on on michelle and jose what their tactics were there and Wayne, you're right. That was that was the deciding end. Pretty much, uh, what he means there, Bina, is that uh, Michelle and Jose needed to score to stay in the match, and they needed to score two or more, probably three, to have a chance to stay in this match. But nine to one, yeah, it's going to be very difficult to uh, to overcome. So yeah, I mean, a steal of three after they they lost three in the in the 
end before. Maybe that's just uh, a bit too much, the, the bridge too far. All right, we have an update from sheet B. Plastique van Looy scored three in the fifth, so Leapfrog back to take the lead again, six to five over IDK. So real back and forth over there. And on sheet A, Bilenki scored two in the fourth. So they lead it eight to one over Wiki the Viking in the fifth. Oh, oh. Even I missed that joke, Bina. <laughs> I was wondering why you capitalized the cider, but who am I to criticize somebody's uh, spelling? <laughs> yes, Wayne is our resident Canadian, one of our resident Canadians living here in Belgium, although he's been in Belgium longer than he's lived in Canada, so. <laughs> yeah, Wayne used to be a team member of the, the Canadians, but then uh, they relegated last uh, winter round and the Canadians didn't bring a team into the, the spring round. So I'm wondering if we're going to see the Canadians next year in the, the Belgium Curling League. I don't well, I know, really know. We, I know we, Gary is trying to, to put a team together. Um, we will see. We'll see. They might. He, he mentioned they might bring the guys, the Dutch guys back down, but it's a matter of scheduling and all of that, so. But these are just rumors. Just rumors floating it out there. Yeah. Yeah, apparently we have quite a lot of uh, potential teams signing up with the BCL in the, in the regular games. Dirk was mentioning there is a potential of 24 teams, which would really kind of max out the, <laughs> the, the full potential of, uh, of the BCL in terms of uh, play slots or game slots. And Dirk uh, said, oof, oof. And that's something Just you don't want to see. Huge frustration from yeah. Kevin. He is not happy. You don't really see him do things no. like that for Brahm? Yes, 100%. But from Kevin, you don't see him uh, no. kind of show that kind of frustration like that, the slamming of the brooms. Just not been there morning. And yeah, normally you're slamming the broom on the ice, and in our club it's kind of the Brahms signature move. Uh, <laughs> if, if you hear big broom slams on the ice, everybody will look to Brahm kind of uh, instinctively. Yep. Well, that was a pretty, pretty big one. Two hands yeah. overhead. Like Brahm usually doesn't go that high up on his. Yeah. That was a Biggest big, big chop. Yeah. <laughs> I think it, it hit the ice not on the the pad side, but actually on the uh, kind of broom head side. So a little could bit. Could have left a dent in the ice there. Trying to clean things out. Trying to clean up the path. Doesn't quite split things up. Going to give an opportunity for Michelle and Jose to score something big here. Also, Duke not happy. And it gets to be hard when, you're, when you've got a lead this big to kind of stay focused and make sure you finish out the match, you know, playing focused and not giving up a big end because... Knowing that hey, it's so difficult for the other team to come back, but this is when this is how that how Michelle and Jose can come back if if they if AD lose their focus, you know, next thing you know, they've scored four, maybe five, and we've got a match again. I yeah. think that's what it's going to take to go to go any extra ends. It's still three be... ends to play, so they need they need basically a win. They have the hammer. They could have hammer in the, the last ends if you kind of uh, follow the, the the basic logic of curling. I think, I honestly though, I think they're gonna need to score a four in this end. They'd still be four down, yeah. And so they they'd have to steal out. I don't think they could afford to give yeah, up right. another end to uh, so that if they don't score four here, at least four, 
I think we're seeing handshakes. Yeah, the thing is, stealing is maybe slightly easier in the double since uh, if you don't have the hammer you get to throw the first stone and if you nail that first stone you're set up for a good steal get it in get it in oh jeez just a little bit light that one absolutely needed to be in the house and you just i think you just see the frustration in kevin yeah. he's just he's had a rough morning he's not happy with it Derek and Fela discussing what are their options here? What do they need to cover up? Yeah. Yeah, Dirk is actually in the, the typical counter play mode here. If I'm he he tries to get in the heads and of their opponents. If if I were the opponents, what would my plan be? What would my strategy be? And is there a way to counter play that strategy? Because if you're if you're leading, sometimes it's the best to just uh minimize all of the options of your opponents to uh to score basically yeah you don't yeah. you don't play for uh winning ends scoring big points it doesn't matter if you're leading by eight or nine or ten at this point yeah being is asking if the ice is sticky well it's it's a little bit s slower than it has been the last couple of weeks with the tournaments and it's curling a little bit less and i think that may have some effects to me, it looks relatively normal for our club nights, so maybe that's one of the things if when you've they had it set up really well for the tournaments, and uh, if you get used to that, it, yeah, this can be a little bit difficult for them to 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 play. Sometimes it's just off off day. You know, you just can't seem to find your yeah, your happens. speed, your rhythm. So if you don't find that draw weight, you don't kind of build a good muscle memory to throw a T line stone, then. And it happens to everybody all game long. You struggle finding that kind of T-line weight. The one stone is too hard, the other is too soft. You try to adjust, you try to compensate, which brings you into kind of overcompensating each time. And and before you know it, the game's over and uh, the, the damage done. Yeah, so Wade's saying there's about a meter of curl and 2.8, 2.9. So I'll explain that a bit. So Bina, one meter is about a little bit more than one yard. So... <laughs> <laughs> And then the 2.8, 2.9, it's like the measurement of speed from when the the slider pushes off, when the stone crosses the T line to where it crosses the hog line. That's kind of how we, we measure that speed and that gives us kind of a distance on this. So when we're talking that number, 2.8, 2.9 seconds is the speed it would need to get to the T line on the other side. Yep. And so it's 2.8, 2.9, it's a little bit on the slow side uh, normally, you're looking, you know, you try to set it up around three, um, but it's not that huge, big of a difference there. But sometimes you do have to give it a little bit extra, and it, it, if you're not if you're not fast enough, it's going to curl a lot more sooner. So they're looking at their options here. What can they do? There's the tiniest of gaps there to, you know, try to get rid of that yellow one sitting in the second position, but then they run the risk of clipping that outside guard, and then they don't know where it's going to go. <laughs> yeah, when three to three two, I think is is ideal. That brings the sweepers. The faster the ice, for those of you who don't know, the faster the ice, the more the sweepers can do. So you can throw it slower and the sweepers can kind of carry it along a little bit further. So that 3.0 to 3.2 for the T line is, is a good speed because it brings a much more control into the game. Risky stone here, but they kind of have to do it. Honestly, I think they should be coming from the inside to the outside on this. But I don't know. 
you have teams at the higher levels, Vina, that discuss the time from hogline to hogline. Um, seems to be a little bit more on the skip side, but like Team Vareka, they actually talk about things on that speed when they're when they're discussing everything together. Maybe this one will run and double those two out. It does well? It does, it does. Yeah, that's a, uh, that's an interesting shot there. So they are sitting two at the moment, okay. and that's a very very nice double. I like that one a lot. I mean, that was the kind of stone they needed to. Oh. Add. Did they accidentally? Oh. I think they oh, yeah, accidentally yeah. kicked it out of play. They okay, realized yeah. there's one stone. <laughs> there's. I I missed that. Uh, <laughs> I think I think uh, Brecht accidentally thought, okay, this is gonna get out of play, and kicked it away, not realizing that it wasn't fully <laughs> getting out. I've done that. Sometimes you just think, oh, that's a, that's a, it's a double. It's out, and yeah. it's like, no, not really. <laughs> still interesting uh, they're sitting too uh, it, of course Vedi has one more stone uh, to play here I'd play for them would be to draw it into uh, as close to the forefoot as possible to kind of reduce the, the scoring potential for yeah. uh, for Michel and Jose here uh, uh, I think they can I think they could actually get it into the forefoot and buried mm -hmm. and that would be enough to to sit shot so the risk is that they leave it outside and in a position they can hit and roll or just yeah, use or to just no stake out that kind of stuff stake it yeah so goal here is trying to get it in second shot position and at least bury it behind the guards if not you know, they want to make sure yeah the last thing they don't want to hit this red to tap it in so they they need to keep it out looks good but it's very good. Is it going to be buried enough? That's the only question. No, here. I don't think so. I mean, it is going in that second shot position, but well, it's it's not entirely exposed. So even the risk of taking it out is if the angle is slightly off, they could uh, shoot it straight towards the the shot stone, have the jam, and then give yellow one point. But the question, but the thing is, they kind of have to. They're in a position being uh looking at a, a score gap of eight points yeah. they don't have the the luxury of avoiding that well, risk they have an option i think brecht sees it if they hit that red one just slightly off the nose inside center line side of the nose they can run that back onto the yellow get rid of the yellow and score three that way yeah without having that uh, additional risk maybe, maybe that's the the better way to do it indeed yeah well not maybe it is a better way Because yeah, you really want to avoid uh, tapping yellow on uh, on that shot position. Yeah. So while they're setting this up, update from sheet A, Belenki steals another one in the fifth, so they lead it nine to one over Wiki the Viking in the sixth end over there. So we're looking yeah. at. So Belenki uh, going for that second win in, in the tournament. They they really need three wins and then uh, good LZs. Oof. Quick, quick call for the line there. Mm, it's going to be too far inside. Unfortunately. No. Uh, that's just one for, uh, one for Michel and Jose. That's probably not good enough. So we might see handshakes, although yep. we don't know for sure. Yeah, there's there are no obligation to uh, to throw up handshakes yet. Yeah, this so they're gonna decide so to play one now. more. I think I think uh, Brecht and Kevin want to play this one out. Maybe try to figure some things out. For, they still have one more match to play this this afternoon. Curling is a weird sport for all the best reasons. Importance of sportsmanship, the usual, I like the capitals there, <laughs> usual calm in the play, and even though things look kind of slow, the ends can change so suddenly. Yep, yep. Yeah, I think that's a very good kind of a summary of the sport right there. Yep. Ooh, we're getting a power play here in the seventh. Uh-huh. So uh, we finally get to explain the concept of power play as we see it live in action here. All right, so as you notice, the starting positions of the stones 
change. They've the the losing team from the previous end gets to choose where they put the stones. They can choose left side or right side. So obviously they've chosen the left side as you're looking at from it this way, right from the other, <laughs> the wall side. We're going to call it the wall. And so it's a you have to figure out the team's the need to build up a strategy here. <laughs> yeah, we're supposed we yeah, you know, we're supposed to know all of that stuff since we played a sport, I think uh but still it couldn't it can be confusing. I've there are doubles games where players got confused during the game. I remember I think it was um double trouble against hammerheads where players suddenly were confused about the amount of stones they had to play and there was a big discussion going on on the ass like where are we in the game where yeah. <laughs> do we so it's not just me that gets confused here in the booth a bit of a mistake there from brecht leaving that one short and he saw his head up in the air like uh and so now th oh, this one looks like it might be a little bit light as well they just want to try to get this one to touch the house so the strategies are a bit different here. So Fairly and Dirk, they're going to try to split the house. They wanted to put something on the other side, leave it, you know, force uh, force uh, Kevin and Brecht to, to chase after it. Brecht was aiming to try to freeze up against that, uh, that yellow one to kind of take it out of play and kind of give it a guard so that once, or a uh, backing so that when they can start taking out, Obviously a little bit short, so Kevin is going to try to come in around behind that one. Set up something in a stronger position with behind some backing. Or behind a guard. Yeah. Now, sometimes I wouldn't feel comfortable playing power play against Dirk because somehow I feel in power play situations, uh, half of his teams are suddenly like, oh my god, what's the, the kind of the meta here? What's the, the game plan? And Dirk, he knows, he knows... Uh, obvious setups yep. for these types of games and another throw two lights two, yep. light two shorts like uh, adding a third guard to that shot stone of uh, VD not helping them no and honestly we were told like actually Dirk taught us like we 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 did the same strategy that uh, Kevin and Brecht, where we were behind, we called a power play, and... And we tried to freeze we up We were trying to freeze down. up against it where we didn't need it. He's like, the center is the scoring area. So yeah. if you're trying to score in the power play, and you have the hammer... So see, they don't have the hammer, so for them it makes sense to go over and play that freeze to try to take that one yeah. out of the place, out of play. But if you have the... If you, if you have the hammer, you put things in the middle or the other side, and you try to... Yep. Then you start to guard it. And it's also something that's counterintuitive with doubles if you're normally playing regular games. If you put something in the middle of the house, in normal games they would take it out, but in doubles you can't. You can't even the stones that are in the house, you, you have to leave them there. So it looks like that stone is a sitting duck, but in doubles it's not because you have plenty of stones to uh, to guard. Uh, this one came up light, but it's not in a bad position. It takes away those, using those uh, reds as guards. It's going to force them to get in behind that yellow, use the yellow for a guard. I think at this point, Brecht and Kevin are just going to want to try to get something in the house. They, they, they played this end because they felt like they needed to work on some things, and unfortunately they've had three stones come up, two stones come up short. So... Uh, I think uh, you might be regretting that decision to uh, play this extra end. And if after this end, Michel and Jose are down by more than six six points, they have to, the, uh, the match ends automatically. Yeah. They can't win, so the match will automatically end. So they need to score in order to... Uh, to try to extend the match. Yeah. This one's going to be a little bit heavy. Fairland and Dirk fighting over who's going to sweep it through. Stays in the house, but it is too deep, so... Vady's still sitting with the shot. I think they're going to try to tap this yellow one back into scoring. I think scoring. they're just going to draw here. 
That's true. The tap, I think it's there if they want it. They're going to try to draw in behind it. But if yeah. it's inside and it taps on that yellow one, that's not the end of the world. No, I think they're just going to uh, try and draw behind uh, the yellow one. I think that's typical for uh, Dirk. Yep. To just go for the simple solution, like a uh, plain and simple takeout, draw, guards. Feels a bit inside, so I think it is going to tap. Yeah. You're going to have to sweep to hold it, though. It might curl Could around over here. Yeah. It's a tap for sure. No, nope, that's going to be nice. That's going to be just fine. Excellent stone here. Excellent stone. We'll click that. Yeah. Those, it, it looks like a simple shot, but that kind of thing isn't as easy as it appears at first look. Ooh, update from sheet B. IDK scored two in the sixth to take the lead again at seven to seven to six in the seventh end there Ooh. for uh, IDK leading over Plastique van Looy. Very interesting. Yeah, Bina saying that it's up to the players or the skips to resolve things. They usually don't need to go to the officials. That's so weird. Yeah, that is kind of a unique thing to this sport. I mean, especially when you look at a lot of American sports have, they have to have referees for everything. Because people can't decide. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. It's it's a very fair sport. I mean, there's there's a rule: the the hog line violation. You are supposed to release the stone before your stone uh, crosses the hog line. So you, um, they used to have handles with little LED lights built into them to measure that, but due to technical errors, sometimes the the system gave failures, and, and that's one of the the few times where you would have. Uh, game officials come into play to to help design yep. but even for hog line violations it's not like in tennis where you have people watching the lines to see if the ball crosses the line or not nobody is actually really watching those hog line violations you yeah. kind of assume that players respect that rule well it's a, yeah the, it's the teams are watching the other teams will often play and if something is close they'll ask an official to look at it or they'll they'll make a call and then it's up to the teams to decide how to do it and sometimes they'll call in the officials like those handles with the lights in it are really only used at like the worlds and Europeans. So nice stone there from yeah. from Dirk. Just take it out, rolls over, sits. So now yeah, finds a nice roll behind the guard there. So there's a, I think excellent execution. That looks so simple, just a plain and simple take out and roll. But yeah, the uh, the revenue is so high on uh, on that one. Yep, Beatty lying three. Last stone for Michel and Jose. I think this is going to be the last stone of the match for them. <laughs> this is the last end. I don't think it's... Well, they can't. They they can only get it to... Well, if they steal one, they get it to six and they can play the last end. But yeah. as soon as they have a stone that's... It's no longer possible for them to play six or yeah. score six, the match will end. Yeah, so who is the one with the hammer? The one that gets to decide which stone sits where? Yes. So if you're VD, that means you're just yeah. going to say your sixth stone is going to be the guards, and therefore you can only potentially score five. Yep. So this one carries too deep. They cannot score. So the game this is, match uh, is over. Yeah, this match. I think Yeah. they're just drawing for four just to have that last little throw on the ice. But uh, yeah, I think very solid game from Vidi. They they played solid, and even with the difficult stones, they they were very good in terms of execution. So well deserved win for Vidi. They they really didn't steal uh, the game here. They, no, they, they stole no. a couple of events, but they didn't steal the game. No, no. I think I think for Michelle and Jose, Kevin and Brecht just really struggled with their line. Maybe we'll save this for when the match actually ends, so we have something to talk about in the yeah. wrap up. <laughs> so just a simple. Draw to the white for four for Vady just to put a the gentleman's draw a stamp on this match, and I think this also seals the deal for Michel and Jose as they uh, leave the playoffs and uh, last position. Ooh, just a little bit heavy, but that's gonna run back onto the red and rolls out. So only scoring three, <laughs> only uh, only scoring three, <laughs> but yet another steal of three right there oh. so the big win for Vedi 12 to 2 and 7 ends although 
Let's be fair. That last end was only played because Kevin and Brecht wanted to get some, uh, some, <laughs> some practice. I don't think they really yeah. thought they were going to come back and win this, but I think they wanted to just try to figure things out. And yeah. unfortunately, they did not seem to figure things out. <laughs> and uh, Tour mentioned that was an open draw for four, and Virla missed. So uh, there was a big uh, flashback. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know that the kind of chromatic flashbacks in the meme where if you if you mention big noises uh, old veterans would have traumatic flashbacks with helicopters that kind of go going through vietnam ages i think tour had one of those moments again if he if he yeah. sees an open draw for four that would uh, bring him into this kind of traumatic flashback if anyone knows what a missing an open draw for four is it would be tour so that was this concludes round two that Interesting was round game. two yeah um I think the, the big takeaway from this one is Vedi needed to win. They could not lose this game. And this also means that we are going to have a very interesting last game. Vedi against IDK, potentially on stream, a head-to-head -head game, potentially for the like, kind of tournament deciding game. But yeah, it's important for Vedi to stay in running for the championship yeah. here to win this one. Well, it's not quite over yet. We've got sheet b there in the seventh end things are still really tight over there maybe we can kind of look in on the scoreboard oh, or something just over the camera, there you can do uh some so voiceovers. so yeah it's uh so for this match yeah vady looked really strong michelle and jose really struggling here with their uh with everything with their speed their line uh, not their best day so yeah you see oops what Oh, you had We're, it on the you had it on the score. Then yeah. you put it back to me. I was just about to say yeah, the score. I, so yeah, you were mentioning the score, but the game is over. There was that the final score uh, on sheet B. No, no, no. no they're no, no, they're, they're still, still playing. playing. They're yeah, still playing, it's yeah. it's tight. They're gonna go to they're gonna go to eight ends. Unfortunately, it's a little bit more difficult for us to cover that with oh, the yeah. cameras. But so like the situation on sheet B, who's red, who's yellow? Let's start with that. Red is IDK. Yellow is Plastic Van Loy. So we've got some uh, you know. Right now we're looking at it. They've got a lot of stones in the house. Maybe we do we have a look at it? Yep. So IDK sitting with the with the hammer or with the shot stone. Plastique van Loy if has the hammer, so they've got to try to find a way to get that red out. Looks like they're gonna try a run back here. There's an opportunity there, so this would this could give them three, would leapfrog them back into the lead. Yep. I don't know if that is the hammer stone though. I don't trying know for to count. Sure. It's hard to count from here. So this is a. Uh, I, I. It's going back and forth. You know, yeah. you look at the scoreboard. You see that you know. IDK is taking four ends versus three or two for uh, Plastique van Loy, but Plastique van Loy has been scoring threes when they score. So it's tight. It's tight all the way. Yeah, big stone here coming from Brom. So uh, he has to st still play. So uh, while we watch for Brom to finish the stone, what's your uh, take on the tournament so far? Are we going to see IDK l going into the final round with uh, with two wins here, or are we going to uh, see a surprise? Oh, Oof. it's rid of one. It's rid of one. Yeah, but, but uh, IDK is sitting in shot position still and i don't know i think kind of a disappointment there and uh, and the broom <laughs> slam, slam the, the so. signature broom slam <laughs> yeah <laughs> we yeah. mentioned that before but uh we can see it again uh we didn't count the stones but it looks from idk has hammer here. so they're tapping or no so if idk is looking to play one more that means that that uh that uh, plastic van loy will also have another stone so they're going to try to cover this up maybe tap it in score it's going to go to an eighth end. Now, is this going to be our, our IDK going to be leading by three, two, or is Plastique van Loy going to be able to, to do something here and score three themselves and take the lead going in? I don't know, but we're going to see. They're going to have an eighth end over there. Um, it's going to be tough. We, uh, I think the, the match tonight, the ID, it doesn't matter what happens in this one. Mm-hmm. Well, it does. It's because good if, for Belenki, it's important. Uh, yeah, it's important for Belenki. If if IDK wins this, Belenki is out. Um, if IDK loses, then there's still the possibility of the three-way tie. But even with the win... Yeah, if, uh, if IDK loses, then 
uh, I think Vedi and IDK are tied, but they have the head-to-head -head game in the last round, so that could bring Vedi in a position where a win against IDK in the last game would bring them the, the victory, and yes. then they wouldn't have to rely on that LSD, which is pretty bad on Vedi, uh, Vedi's side. They, they've thrown a poor LSD, so they're probably hoping for IDK to drop the ball here, so they get a, a chance to just win against IDK and then win the playoffs. I think that's the situation and and for Belinky, yeah they're, they're hoping for idk to lose because that's the only way for them to kind of stay in the race here and for idk it's simple they have to win to uh, to go into the final round with uh with all of the big odds advantages uh they, yeah. can, they can still lose they can afford a loss against vd because then even their lsd might tip them into the winning position so they would go into a final game with a very very comfortable position so yeah. important important game for them yeah. here it's it's as clear as mud and hopefully by this afternoon <laughs> it'll be a lot more clear we'll be we'll know exactly what's going on but uh we're gonna take the time we're gonna sign off from here we will see you back at 4 15 our time so it's about four hours mm -hmm. from now um yeah we're looking forward to seeing how that plays out we're gonna watch the end of this match offline unfortunately and uh then we'll know a little bit more heading into it so thank you everybody for watching bina good to see you wayne yeah everybody on tour everybody who popped in today good to see you and uh we hope to see you again uh in a Later few hours so for the final game last game of korea yeah. tv for this season final final match of the season and we'll wrap things up so once again thanks bye now bye now